Uh, Bortle here, back from the PPG Championship weekend. My goodness. And we have, whoa, we have Pack over here making top four with Mermails. Water deck, combo deck, insane. What's up? Welcome to the channel, man. Hey, man. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, it's Pack here. Um, so, yeah, I top four this uh, PPG weekend championship this past weekend with, uh, yeah, water deck, man. Very nice, very nice. What made you decide to play this water combo deck versus playing Eldritch, Rock deck, all that stuff? Yeah, so I decided to play this deck because I think it does what combo Elric does, but it's not as, uh, you know, it doesn't fold to one hand trap. Um, and I think I like it over Rock because it basically, like, if I make VFD, like, the Rock deck can't play, and it's the same thing for sure. But um, Minstrel is just, like, an insane card. Like, I mean, the, I think the Rock matchup is actually really, really tough. Like, the, it's it's a really, really strong deck. Like, going second's always, like, scary. Before we jump into this deck profile, would you like to make some shoutouts, man? Yeah, yeah, shoutouts. Yeah, so uh, shout out to uh, my team, Luxury Gaming. Uh, shout out to my also like my YouTube channel, uh, self plug right here. Um, I, I like do a lot of like uh, in depth analysis and gameplay on how we can like improve as a player. And so like, if you want to join me on that journey, definitely check me out at uh, you know Pack Official TCG, which is my YouTube channel. And then I also stream live on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash pack underscore official underscore tcg where i showcase like live gameplay and my decision making process um you know in like big tournaments such as ppgs and lcs's oh god yes we're definitely gonna have to plug most of those in the description down below guys so make sure to check out pox youtube channel and all that stuff my goodness so without further ado would you like to explain this deck profile this craziness yeah yeah so i'll start off with like the hand traps of choice i play a three ash blossom three nibir and like the lone imperm I played seven hand traps because, like, if I use a the hyper geometric calculator, there's a sixty like four percent chance of opening one hand trap in in um in every hand. So like basically out in like a in a match setting, there's like a in out of every three test hands, you should open up at least one hand trap. So I I needed this just to like compete with like the combo Olic deck. Like I they fold to one hand trap, and so like. All I needed really was to see one hand trap and be able to like play through their board because like the elder cards are not that scary for the look of water deck. Like they usually shotgun like their golden lord and then like you can like, just dump like infantry and then infantry just pops lord and then all of their like cards are now like like their back row is just not like useless. It just becomes vanilla. Um, and yeah, and then after that you have like the three dragoons, the three heavy infantry, the three diva, the three minstrel, the three Teus. Uh, the Munglacia and like the three Neptibus, uh, the, the Pike and the Lapis. So for the water cards, and you're probably looking at this as like, yo, Pack, you're kind of crazy, man. Like, um, you're not playing, you're not playing like Megalo. Like, what's what's up? And I'm like, yeah, that card's a brick. Don't don't play that. That card is literally a minus two, and it's it's like not a minus two if you like open it up with like double dragoons, which is like the odds of that happening is like, yeah, it's just not gonna happen. So. Like, I just cut, like, essentially, like, when I was, like, making this deck list, I wanted to cut out, like, bricks. Like, I, I didn't want to see, like, any brick at all. And, like, or, like, at least if there were bricks, they were essential to the combo. So, like, that was kind of justifiable. Um, like, I just didn't want to play water cards just to, like, play them, really. And and then in post-eco, right, like, uh, Minstrel is literally, like, an insane card. This card is, like, Red Lotus, turn one. It's, like, a pseudo call by degree, but it's better because you gain public information of their hand. And you like can hit Nibiru, you can hit like Baylor. I'm sorry, Imperm, which are cards traditionally like Call by the Grave couldn't, um, you know, hit. Um, and you're also probably thinking like, Yo, Pack, where's like the Deep Sea Aria? Yeah, that card's a brick too because if you just do the math like in the calculator, right, you'll find out that like you need to dump a water to the grave for that card to become a starter. There is no way for you to like dump a card, a water monster in the graveyard unless you open up Minstrel Aria, and the chance of that happening is like, it's like very low. It's like at least, I think like 15% or like 10% chance. So like two, like that means like 90% of the time, Aria is a break. Or like, it, you have to like open up with like Teus, for example, like, and so, or like cards that don't use their normal summon. So like, it doesn't become a starter, like like Deep Sea Aria, the spell card, and it's not really an extender because it doesn't search your card unless you extend. Um, so that's like the reason why. I think this is like a really, really good water count. The only other thing that's weird about my list is I play triple, um, Atlantean Heavy Infantry, and that's because it has like a double summon effect. So like, if you go Normal Summon Infantry and Normal Summon Diva, you get hand trapped on Diva. Then you can make Noodle Fiber, um, because Deep Diva for some godforsaken reason is a <laughs> tuner. So like, you can just go Infantry Diva into uh, Fiber, and then that plays through like one hand trap just off that combo. And then like Fiber Resolving is FTK as you know in this format. Speaking of Attorney Code, you are playing the three copies of Minstrel. I believe that's it in the main deck at least for Attorney Code. So great explanation yeah. on that. 
and uh, it is insane that Deep Sea Diva is a tuner, so that's crazy right there alone. But yeah. you are playing some non-water monsters, man. Yeah, so of course, man, like, I wanted to make the deck essentially kind of like as resilient as possible and have different routes, right? So that means that it, be, being able to play through more hand traps. So what are, like, the cards that are automatically getting hand trapped are like Diva, uh, you know, the Prince, um, like Dragoons. They're all getting hand trapped. And so I wanted another layer of, I guess, ex like easy combos, easy extenders to be the end goal. And that is like Noodle Fiber resolving, right? And so I have I play like the Despots and the O-line for that the Needle Fiber combo in which I like either go for the Savage O-line play or I go for like the Draw 2 VFD play. And the thing is, Minstrel gives me public information of their hand so I know which route I want to take. Like, do I want like... And you also know what cards like to hand loop. So it's just like insane. And so you just play one despot and two O lines just because if you hard draw one O line, it's it's uh, you can't combo. Um, at least you can, but like I don't play the extra deck cards for that allows you to combo if you hard draw O line. Um, and then the despot just because that card is crazy. It also gets really huge. It goes up to three thousand attack if you summon it off of Aurora Dawn. My goodness, so it's really nice. So uh, how often did you summon the Mullen Glacia and get that combo up to where you're like wrecking your whole opponent's hand? Yeah, that, that combo that's that's part of every combo. Uh, like uh, Neptibus is a one card. Hand loop for two, draw two, and VFD. Diva is a one card, same thing. Uh, Minstrel Dragoons, uh, it's a, it's basically the same combo as opening up Diva, except you see their hand. Taish Dragoon is the same combo. Uh, Infantry Diva is the same combo. So like as you can see, there's like, I think probably like six different avenues of card combinations that you can draw that are just like combo, and, and that's like I think what makes this deck high, like super insane. Unfortunately, you do have to play like bricks. Like Lapis Dragon is a brick. Like you have to play it. Um, you have to play the Death Boss. You have to play the O line. You have to play like hand traps, right? Like hand traps are technically bricks, right? But you have to play it in a format where Needle Fiber resolving is FTK. So, so that's like that's pretty much it. Sweet. And again, guys, make sure to hit up Pock's YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure he has an in-depth theory on this water deck. Uh, as far as your spells goes, I see you want to resolve Call by the Grave since there's not a lot of water mirror matches, right? I play, I use Call by the Grave just because, like, I need my cards to resolve. And, like, in a 15 hand trap format with, like, combo all, like, running, like, like, godforsaken numbers of, like, like, you know, cards to stop you from being able to play, you need Call by the Grave. It's also, like, an insane offensive and defensive card in general. Like, this card, like, if you, I, in my top eight feature match, I Call by the Grave twice, my opponent's Block Dragon, and, like, he just couldn't play. <laughs> like, Call by the Grave is just so strong. Like, even if it doesn't hit a hand trap, like, hitting cart, like, the graveyard is so important. That's why, like, Striker and Shark Hand is, like, so powerful, right? Because, like, the, the graveyard is, like, one of the most important, like, strategies or, like, it's in, like, today's, like, metagame. Like, if you just call by the grave, like, the big golden boy, like, they just can't out your Moonglacia, right? Because that's how, like, they try to, like, solve for the game. They, they use Golden Lord Effect, Dump, hit the Moonglacia, and just, like, call by the grave, and then they just can't play. Facts, man. And uh, would you like to explain this one copy of Midfield Breaker? Because this card's pretty nuts alone. <laughs> God, bro. Yo, this card is just insane. This card is FTK. Like, if you open up this card, I, I played through four hand traps with just one Midbreaker field. Like, this card was insane. Like, this guy opened up double double Valor, Ash, Nibiru, and I just went Midbreaker field, Minstrel, Rip, Nibiru, and just won the whole game. Like, I played through that, like, super easily. Midbreaker field is just crazy. Like, Ghost Mourner targets, Imperm targets, Valor targets, like... Uh, you also can get Ghost Ogre, so like a lot of people are playing that now. Like they're going oh, Ghost Ogre on Noodle Fiber. I'm just like, bro, Mid Breaker Field is just like literally FTK. That card is crazy. Like I think Rock players are starting to catch on and playing this card too. Um, yeah, Mid Breaker Field is just like Ashy Degenerate. Oh, that, that's just insane. And obviously, you got the Reborn, which is kind of standard nowadays for like these insane combo decks, and yeah. the one for one for your uh, Nephis level one dude right there. Yeah, exactly. Like Monster Reborn is actually so insane, is because if you get hand trapped, right? You just reborn their hand trap go noodle fiber like oh like, man that's just crazy right because most of the hand traps are tuners actually all of them are tuners except dd crow i'm um, really so yeah go monster reborn take their tuner uh make make fiber and this gg so they need like a second hand trap like opening two hand trap and like it's not like that likely right so the goal is you need to play through at least one and like minstrel lets you play through two if you open up with the reborn call by grave lets you play through two so like you'll notice that like, a lot of my deck is the goal is to actually play through two hand traps like it's not even just play through one it's play through two because i'm assuming like if you're playing 15 hand trap it's a 50 percent chance in, in every hand to open up at least two so the goal of this deck is to play through two hand traps nice nice and it's very cool to see 
triple pot of average, man. How did this perform uh, over yeah. the weekend? I mean, this card is literally the either the worst cards or like the best card. It's I have a love and hate relationship with Avarice, but I think it's mandatory to play in the water deck. And the reason why I say it is, is because like post turn one, you used your whole like you use so many of your resources. And the problem is Dragoons is like so OP, right? Like Dragoons is like probably how you like get started in your plays. So you want to recycle your Dragoons, but it also lets you recycle your extra deck. And I'm um, going first if you like you have so many one card combos that like. The average just lets you draw into more hand traps, draws into Call by the Grave, draws into like Monster Reborn, which makes your end board even crazier, right? Uh, it gets you in like Nibiru, Ash, like you're drawing, you you basically have six cards in hand with 50 and you hand loop them for two. At the end of your combo, if you open up Diva, average, just those two cards. Um, so I like average for that, but it also gives me the recover play, recovery play against like, like for example, when I played against Striker, average was just insane. Like I, I was like grinding the deck just because I had average. And but also like when I played against like Guru or like like Geist, like Average was just crazy because it just gives me gets me back into the game right away, um, and it shuffles all my resources. And then they have to deal with like Nept like Neptibus again, right? Because Neptibus dumps for cost, so Neptibus by itself plays through two hand traps. So um, like that's why like I think Average is mandatory. But at the same time, like if you don't open up your starter, then Average is a break. But like I said, I think you there's around like probably 18 cards in the deck that does combo and like. There are times where I just don't draw the combo, but you know that's 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 for another time, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. And you have the one copy impermanence, which you explain that you're running seven hand traps because of that busted calculator you have. Uh, would you please explain why you're not using abyss gun in this deck? Yeah, so I'm not playing abyss gun, and I play actually abyss pike. So that's like my targeted search off of like uh, Taze. So gun is good, but gun is only good. If it if you play like a high mermail comp, because what gun does is if she's discarded to the grave, um, she, uh, for any reason actually, she's one of the only ones where like you can actually discard her for any reason, and then it doesn't have to be through like a water monster effect, um, to and then essentially it reborns a mermail monster in your deck, but yeah, gun doesn't do anything for your combo either. Like it, the best it does is like it brings back taste, but that assumes you have taste in the graveyard. So like gun is a brick too, because like, because it assumes you have something in the graveyard already, and it has to be a mermail card. And so I just play Pike because, like, Pike is, like, a card that's, like, it's not bad to draw because if you draw Pike Dragoons, that's, like, the full combo. That's, like, a two-card combo that ends on the same board that one nep one card Neptibus or one card Diva does. Um, and, then, but, and then Pike also ser it searches any level three monster, so it searches you Minstrel. So, like, Pike is actually pretty good. Beautiful explanation. And this extra deck, it looks kind of standard for, like, maybe a, uh, you know, a rock deck, but there's one card that really yeah. stands out, which is that area, man. Would you like to explain this extra deck? Yeah, yo, so the area is crazy, man. This card is insane. Like, going second, area baits out, like, at least an interruption. And, like, any two water monster does it for you, but you play all mo water monsters, right? So what you do is you go Arya, take take their uh, take their Noodle Fiber, and then make Access Code Talker. It's a, it's a, literally a one-card Access Code Talker, and everyone's playing Noodle Fiber in their deck, right? So you're always guaranteed that they have a Noodle Fiber in their deck. And so the way you, like, make sure that their Noodle Fiber goes in the grave is that you uh, don't ask the Noodle Fiber, you ask the Aurora Dawn. And because it then it forces them to link off the needle fiber, so that's like another like like uh, something you have to like consider in the moment as well. But like our area is crazy. Like you just go area, take uh, needle fiber, go access code, and if they don't like, if they don't stop the area, then you just you know pop one of their cards like for free. So it's just like insane. Yeah, it's insane because like even against like the elec deck, so our area like all the water charmers right or like all the charmers like if they're like destroyed by uh, by battle or, or any for and card effect for any like reason, you uh, at least for an opponent card effect you can actually search any like water monster in your deck that's 1500 or less defense right bro that's like almost your entire deck so like you can search diva you search minstrel search ragoon search infantry search neptibus so like they can't even like out it like with conquistador they have to like like stop it with like impermanence so like or like or like another hard removal so like it's just like really insane like that card is really really strong would you like to explain your side deck choice, your side deck options overall? Yeah, so like I have the one Valor and like the two Imperm. Um, that's just because like you want to maximize your chances of drawing one hand trap over against combo all like. Also like uh, um, the double Imperm is nice because it actually plays through Guardian. So like that's like the only reason why like Imperm is like technically better than Valor, but Valor is in tuner, so you can always normal summon it and like go neutral fiber. Uh, you play double Cosmic Cyclone and then uh, triple Lightning Storm. That's just to, like respect like back row decks like Gru, Geist, uh, Striker. Um, you also want it to like outbind, so that's why you play Cosmic Cyclone. Um, like yeah, Cosmic Cyclone actually won me a game against uh, Elise, uh, who's piloting Strike Striker because she like mind me, and I'm like Cosmic game. 
And then um, Dark Ruin no more just for the, the rock board standard. And then Mystic Mind, this card is crazy. Mystic Mind's terror rotation was insane because so Midbreaker Field, like for those of you who don't know, you can't you can't activate terraforming and then activate Midbreaker Field. It has it's like extravagance. It has to be the first thing you do at the start of M1. So you like uh, the the way to like get around that is like set rotation. You can go set rotation, uh, set, and then set in the standby phase, and then and then M1 activate Midbreaker Field and then just win the game. So that's like that's why that's like that card is like pretty pretty good. Uh, and, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like most of the rock deck, because they think you're playing, they're, like they see you playing combo, they side out all their back removal, or like at least they don't side it in. So like if you resolve mine, you just win the game. Like that, and that's what happened in, in Swiss at the PBG too. Like I think round four or something. This rock player, like uh, you know, I I like tear through his board. Then I was like he baited all his engage because all my all my cards are like high impact, right? If you're almost something diva or Neptimus, like that's just like like get, like just just gets negated. Like it just gets negated 100. percent and then you just go mine at the end of it, crash your card, go mine, and then just yeah, just win, just deck them out. Pass, 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 activate average, shuffle all your cards back, there's no way you deck out, so it's just game. My goodness, beautiful explanation, man. Any final thoughts, bro? Oh man, I think this like I think this deck was good because not a lot of people played it and not a lot of people know what this card like the, these cards do or like when to hand trap them properly. I think that's like the I guess why a rogue deck is like so strong. Um, and that's why, like, Salad, like, for example, that was piloted um, by Gabriel which did so well because people forgot to play against Salad. And then the, the new strategy with Salad, like, people don't really know that and they haven't really caught on yet. And that's, I think that's, like, the, the reason why, like, I think my water deck did so well is because, like, people were hand trapping, like, the wrong cards and I just played through them, like, so easily because of that. So, yeah, I mean, I think this deck is, like, good, but it's also, like, kind of bricky. Um, I, I've been trying to like perfect this list, and it's it's taking me like a really really long time. But I really really enjoy this. I find the format kind of stale right now playing rock or animus Spirits. It's just like not the deck I have like the most fun with. So I wanted to play a deck that it was like really fun and also like competitive at the same time. And I think this was the answer for me. Um, there's nothing wrong playing animus Spirit or Elec. Uh, it's totally fine. Uh, it's, it's just boring for me personally. Um, but yeah, man. Without without further ado, yo, thank you so much, Border, for uh, you know taking me on uh, this interview. Um, really appreciate it, man. And remember to follow Pack on social media. Hit up the description down below. And whoa, if you're not part of Bortle Nation, sub for Bortle. It's that easy and it's free. Oh, God, yes. Until next time, Bortle out.